Hey there everyone, Hitesh here from LearnCodeOnline.in. I hope you are enjoying this series. If yes, do visit LearnCodeOnline.in and also notify me as well. So now let's just proceed and try to do all things. Now we have learned quite a lot of things. We know how the if and else works and how these things works. Now we can move on and proceed something on to building a really, really small things or like that. Okay, so we're going to create a new file in this basics too. And I'm going to call this as simply marvels.js. Yes, I'm a big fan of marvels. But yes, I do like DC as well, especially in the cartoons. I prefer DC. So there we go. We're going to have a marvels list and we're going to create a couple of things here. So the, now the new things that we are going to introduce here can be a little bit tricky to understand for first, but I highly recommend to rewatch this video. Okay. First of all, did you notice that when I'm writing here console.log, there is a special pattern that I'm following. I'm using a dot notation and then I'm using a word here and then a pair of parentheses. Now these are known as functions and we will be talking about these functions later on, how we can create our own customized function. As of now, we will be relying totally and totally on the functions or methods being created by already in the JavaScript. Okay, so that's the one thing. So now we are going to learn one more data type, which is this is a really common data type. And this is known as array. And these are really the powerful one. A lot of jokes are around in the community about arrays that yes, programmers always count from zero and all the stuff like that. So yes, these are all coming up from the array. Very beautiful, very amazing to work with. In fact, every application that you see has some sort of array, whether that's your message list, your Trello list, your to-do list, or anything at all. It's, it's mostly about arrays, list, and all such things. So let's just explore our first real-world data type, which you'll be using quite a lot. And usually for the arrays, we use const, okay? And then we are going to go for, uh, let's just call this as super heroes there we go so we have a list of superheroes now so far what we have been doing we have been doing something like this uh, like we want to declare anything we just say let uh, one is going to be equal to one and then let two or something like that two is going to be equal to two something like that now we don't want to do that instead of declaring like thousands or maybe hundreds of variables just like that we want to declare just one variable and store everything inside it. It saves us a lot of time and is very efficient way of working that. Now, in order to, we want to pack multiple values in just one variable, that is it, How this is how we do it. Now, if you want to have multiple values in it, let's just say we want to have uh, something like, uh, let's start with Iron Man. And it's not like you always have to have string values in it. Let's just add one more in here. And that can be spider man. If you want other values, you can surely have in an array, like you can have one, you can have true or something like that. That's completely a valid data type. You can have multiple things in here. But in our case, if we are looking up for superheroes, it makes much sense that we have uh, more the superheroes. Now, if I would have called this variable something like Iron Man, I would be putting an information in an array format uh, like name Iron Man and then the power and the true and all these values. But we have other data types to handle that kind of situation which are much more better than this. So right now we're going to have just uh, superheroes here. So Iron Man, Spider-Man and then we're going to have Captain America. There we go. So we have got our three values in it. So that's good. Now, how can we access these values? So yes, arrays actually are super powerful and they comes up with a lot of built-in functions that we can use. For example, you want to access all of them. What you can do is you can simply log and we can call this as superhero and that's it. So let's just run this. I'm going to open up my terminal, clean that up everything and let's run node and marvel.js. And there we go. So we have got all the values. Okay, that's nice. Now what happens if you want to access any one of them? So hit, uh, I'm going to duplicate that. And we use a square brackets again, but instead of putting any comma separated values, we are going to mention. So we want the first element of the array. So we're going to mention zero. Remember, this is the classic joke that programmers always count from zero. And this is actually, uh, this joke actually borned up in the array. And uh, arrays still are the most used uh, data types in the world. And uh, 
this always starts with zero. So this is why it's, it came around. So save this. And if you want to have a first element here, notice you got your Iron Man here. So this is the first case that we are having in here. Now, obviously you might want to access like probably the last element in the array. And that can be a little bit tricky situation because either you have to count like one, two, and three. So zero, one, and two. So basically you have to write the second element, save that and run that. But that can be a typical case when you have like countable things, probably it is like 20 values inside it, or maybe 30 values, then it can be a little bit tricky to find the last values. And a lot of time we just need last value. This is kind of a programming experience. So how do we do that? Uh, it's actually really simple. What we have to do is we have to calculate the length of this array. Okay, so how do we do that? So let me first show you how do we calculate the length of this array. So it has a function whenever you name your array, this is superheroes. So you name it and then put a dot. Notice there are a lot of things that you can do. As soon as I hit the dot, my code editor is helping me to find out tons of things in it. There are things like map, push, pop, reduce, slice, sort. So yes, these all are methods and features that I can use with. One of them is this length. And uh, I'm gonna just save that. And let's just try and run that again. And there we go, we got that our array is holding three elements. Notice it's not counting from zero, one, two, three. It's saying it has three elements, one, two, three. Okay, so that's it, pure in human language, not in computers like zero, one, two, something like that. Now, once you know how you can have the length of it, you can utilize this knowledge in finding the last element, okay? Now notice here, there are two things. Our length actually gives us human readable values, which is three. But our array, when we call it in this manner, understands the value which starts from zero. So we have to take an account that, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are gonna, first of all, if I mention this guy, just like this in the square bracket, obviously it returns me a three. So instead of this, three is gonna be pasted, just like that, it's gonna be calculated. But third value is not available in my array. So in that particular case, I'll get a special type of error here. So let me just walk you through. Errors are always interesting. Make sure you keep an eye on that. So notice right now I'm getting just directly like three and it has, it has no idea absolutely what to do with that. So what we have to do is uh, we have to get minus one here so that we can subtract my one from it and can just print that out. So let me just show you that what we are getting here. Notice we are getting a square here and there is a special reason for that. And uh, let me just walk you through with that. It, it can be actually a little bit tricky for a lot of you to understand. What we are saying right now is just print this value. And this is a classic mistake being done by everyone. Notice what we are doing here on line seven and line eight. Can anybody figure out what's the error is? Yes, in here we are just writing, hey, just print me the result of whatever this value is, which is actually two. But in order to access the value from the superhero, we have to mention that as well, just like exactly what we are doing. So far, we have been, notice these square brackets. We are writing everything inside the square bracket, but there's nothing from which we are asking the value. So we have to say superheroes, and then we can simply say, I hope. A lot of people get confused why we are having two superheroes here. Notice one is actually, this will boil down to simply as three, then three minus one is two. So we are asking directly for the second value of it. Okay, I hope it is now clear to everyone. Okay, so now what is going to happen? This is going to calculate the length of the array, which is three. Then we want to subtract one from it because we know the last value is always calculated. Uh, the first value is calculated from zero. So the last value is gonna be one less. So we are handling that situation. And then finally, we are calling superheroes, which is the name of our array and getting that last value. I know we are doing really, really too much uh, for this one example here, but I am looking forward for the case when we have probably like 100 or probably 200 values in the arrays, and it's really hard to find out uh, or individually calculate uh, any one of them and finding the last value of it. Probably you don't know what is the length of that array. So there we go, so really simple stuff. Now what we want to do is we want to print out, first of all, the number, uh, the length of this array, which is superhero. So I'm gonna be saying something like this. Console, we can simply have a log. Oops, Command Z. Log, and there we go. 
And we want to say something like this. So I want to say, you can use single or double quotes. So we have three super heroes. Okay, so how we can do that? Now, I don't want to call it like three superheroes. Maybe I have added one more in here. So I want to calculate this information from something which is coming up dynamically, which is coming up from this array act itself. If I run this, no problem at all. It's going to run. It, we have superheroes. But I want to replace this three which is being calculated. Let's just say for some fun stuff, I'm going to add Thor here as well, which is now a new superhero. And I save this. And if I run this, Notice this guy is still saying the last element, which is Thor, but still we are having three. So we need to learn how we can modify that. And here comes a templating string, which is almost a new feature in JavaScript and is gonna be super helpful. So let's learn one more thing. So we're gonna be deleting this entire stuff. Notice so far we have learned about single quotes. We have learned about double quotes, but there is one more guy which is known as tildes. Uh, really a little bit hard to find, but they are just below your escape key. Okay, so we just have them. Now the beauty about having these tildes or these uh, special characters is we can simply write uh, something like this. We have, uh, we're going to mention that here, super heroes and we want to place three in here. Okay, just after the have. So what I can do is I can use a dollar sign and after the dollar sign I can use these pair of curly braces and I can now add any my JavaScript code that needs to be calculated. Rest of the stuff will be calculated as just a pure string. But here I can mention any JavaScript code. For example, I can simply say three plus four. And if I run this, control L and I run this, notice it is being calculated or it is being evaluated as JavaScript. Similar to this, I can replace it with something like this. Super heroes and I can use dot length and there we go. So it will be evaluated as JavaScript and rest will be calculated as simply the string. So I can run that and there we go. We have got four superheroes. And also the fun part is actually I can just copy paste this entire thing here and copy that and I can paste it directly here to get a last superhero. So although the sentence doesn't really make sense in here, but you'll get the idea what we are trying to do. So we have Thor superheroes, okay? Really doesn't make sense, but uh, I hope you got the point. So these are gonna be super helpful when you'll be working on something known as templatings or Node.js or uh, your JSX. These can be really super helpful at time. So now you know there are three ways of printing the strings, the single quotes, the double quotes, and the tildes as well. So we got some information updated in our memory database. And we have learned about one more data type, how we can access some inbuilt features and all of that. I know these can be a little bit tricky, especially at the line eight, but don't worry. Uh, as the time will progress, we are gonna learn more stuff with that. So that's your new information about your arrays and your templating strings as well. And I'm gonna surely catch you up in the next video. And hey, don't forget to tell me in the comments, are you loving this series or not?